a very popular marriage which is haram, not permissible. And pay attention to the wording marriage. Yes, there's a marriage, but it's not a correct marriage. And this is the marriage of marrying non-Muslim women. And one might ask right away, but it's permissible for a Muslim man to marry a non-Muslim woman. And here's where the problem lies. Is this correct or not? I mean, this is where the problem lies. Is this understanding that people have which is not correct? Yes, there's a certain type of non-Muslim woman that's permissible for a Muslim man to marry. But the reality is, is that our brothers who are marrying these non-Muslim women, they're not marrying the correct type of non-Muslim women. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, وَلَا تَنْكِحُوا الْمُشْرِكَاتِ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنُ And do not marry the polytheist women until they believe. So this ayah makes it clear that it's not permissible at all for a Muslim man to marry any type of non-Muslim woman. Is there any exception to this ruling? Yes, the exception came in the verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ And the chast women from the women of the scripture, the women of the book. Who are the women of the scripture? The Jews and the Christians. So this is what's permissible for a Muslim man to marry. A Christian woman or a Jewish woman. But the reality is our brothers are marrying atheists. They're marrying an agnostic. They're marrying women who don't have any belief or this belief or that belief or different beliefs, but they're not Christian or Jews. And this is haram. It's not permissible to marry such a woman. And the brothers who are falling into this marriage, they're usually one of three categories. First of all, our brothers who are migrating to the West. And he's thinking, you know, I'm coming now. I'm moving to France, to America, to the UK, to Germany to Holland. So since I'm in a Christian country, and pay attention to the wording here, a Christian country, yes, once upon a time, maybe America, you can still say it's still a religious country, but most European countries, most people don't believe in God. And this is what they say themselves. So they identify as being atheists or being agnostic, and they no longer identify themselves as being Christians or Jews. And that's why it's haram to marry such a woman. So these brothers are coming and he meets a, a, a girl in the West and he likes her. So he marries her and he's thinking you know, that it's permissible because she's from this you know, non-Muslim or, or Christian country. And another, in the same category, some of them, they get married because of benefits, because of paperwork, because of, of, of immigration visas. So he marries her and he's like, you know, she says she, she believes. And pay attention to this. She says she believes in what? Because this might sometimes, I've, I found brothers, no, no, she said she believes. When I speak to her, she says she doesn't believe. Or she says, I believe in God, but I'm not Christian. I'm not Jewish. Even this type is not permissible to marry. Even if she says she believes in a God, if she doesn't believe in Christianity or Judaism, this is the only thing that Allah has given us permission to marry. Other than that, it's haram. The second category of, of brothers who marry these women, they're usually from the Gulf countries, in the second and third category. You'll find a lot of them, they come to study as students. Their government sends them as students. So he marries a non-Muslim woman and he says, you know, hey, she's a, you know, from these Christian countries. But she's atheist, bro. She's not Christian. Yeah, it's Lahia Jews. It's not permissible for you to marry her. And the other group, they're the ones who come on the visits. They come during the summertime, come to the visits, and he wants to make it halal, as he says. So he marries this, you know, Western uh, woman and she is what? An atheist and not a Christian. So the zawaj is batil. It's not a correct marriage. So what does one do if he fell into a marriage like this? He thought it was permissible and he married this Western lady saying she's a non-Muslim, it's permissible. But then he realizes she's not Muslim, but she's atheist. So this marriage is not correct. What should I do? He has to divorce her. The contract becomes nullified because it's not a correct contract from the beginning. What about his children? What's the ruling of them? Are they legitimate? Inshallah ta'ala, if he did it, out of ignorance. He thought it was permissible. Like we said, he, you know, think in a non-Muslim country, it's permissible. But then he realizes he was wrong. Alhamdulillah, his children are considered legitimate and they take his name. There's no problem with that, alhamdulillah. However, if he knew the ruling, and this I know brothers, and I've sat with them, they knew the ruling, but he liked her. He met her. He was at a nightclub. She looked good. He wanted to marry her and he ended up marrying this lady. Or you know, the paperwork, I had to get the paperwork. He knew it wasn't really permissible. Should, she has to be Christian or Jew, but you know, mashi, I can do it. If he did this, he falls into the category of being a zani, of being someone who's a fornicator, audhu billah.
Another mistake that brothers are falling into when they marry non-Muslim women, even if she is a Christian or a Jew, is that they're marrying unchaste women. Like we gave the example of the brother who met the sister at the nightclub. And how many of these stories I've heard? He goes out to a nightclub, meets the lady. She's a Zania. She's been with all kinds of men. And he wants to come and marry because he fell in love with her. This is not permissible for a Muslim man to marry, especially if he's chaste in himself. It's not permissible to marry a woman who's unchaste. Even if she's a Muslim and she's unchaste, it's not permissible for you to marry her. In the verse we mentioned from Surah Al-Ma'idah, وَالْمُحْصَنَاتُ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ and the muhsanat from the, the, the chaste women, from the, from the, from the women of the, of the scripture of the book. If she's not muhsana, if she's not someone who is chaste, then it's not permissible to marry her. Therefore, the conditions is that she has to be from the women of the scripture, Christian or Jew, and she has to be muhsana, she has to be a woman who is chaste. But if she's not chaste, what did Allah tell us in Surah An-Nur? Az-zani la yankihu illa zaniyatan aw mushrika. That the zani, the fornicator, does not marry except a female who's also a fornicator or a polytheist. وَزَانِيَةُ And the female, any fornicator, لَا يَنْكِحُهَا إِلَّا زَانٍ أَوْ مُشْرِكٍ That the only one who's permissible to marry, allowed to marry her is the one who's like her, also a fornicator, or is a polytheist. And look what Allah said at the end of the verse, وَحُرِّمَ ذَلِكَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And this is haram upon the mu'mineen, the believers, a meaning to marry such women. And even though it's permissible to marry a woman who is from the women of the scriptures, a Christian or a Jew, I strongly recommend that our brothers do not marry such women and that they only marry believers. Even if you find her amazing, she's beautiful, you really want her. Remember what Allah said in the Quran when He said, وَلَا أَمَةٌ مُؤْمِنَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِّن مُشْرِكَةٍ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ And a slave woman. He gave you the description of an Amma. She doesn't have a high status in society, but she's what? She's mu'mina. To come and to marry a slave woman who is a mu'mina, a believer, it's khayrun, it's better than marrying that kafira, the disbeliever. Even if she and he impresses you, her beauty is something, wow. The beauty of iman is always stronger and always better. And I can tell you story after story, the brothers who come to us for counseling in the West, and he, after they've been divorced from their non-Muslim wives, some of them who have been guided, or some of them not really guided, or, or maybe somewhat guided. But he, he realized now, after all these years, what's going to happen to my children? My children are being raised as kuffar. My daughters now are being raised as kuffar, and they're going to be just like the ones we see, and they're going to end up in the same situation as we see the women in the West. What can I do to save them, Ya Sheikh? The problem came from the beginning, that you didn't make the right choice when you married a non-Muslim woman. Therefore, be careful.